Someone said that they have overbearing parents. Wow, what a unique problem. Um, I think that there's a bit of a stigma when it comes to parents. I think that our society has taught us that you owe something to the person that gave birth to you. What a lot of... Probably shouldn't swear so I can just claim more ad revenue from this. BS! What a load of garbage. Why do you owe anything to the person that gave birth to you? Just because they were laboring for 52 hours while your umbilical was strangled around you and the doctor was probably jerking on it even more? Yes. Yes, I can sell this as a fetus still. It's not too late. Yeah. <laughs> well. Well. Yeah. He was saying that he feels like he's got... <laughs> Sorry, anyway, 55 seconds in, good start. Uh, he was saying that he has overbearing parents and that they are inhibiting every part of his life. He wants to get out of there and move out, but he can't because he feels debt trapped. And so he has this constant fear of walking to the fridge because that make sure that you put the cheese wrapper over the top of it. I haven't even opened it yet, ma. Shut the fuck up. Well, that ruins that ad rev. I think that you would probably find that most people have that and it's called being at home in your 20s. It does suck. And I can't offer any advice to assuage that except for I think that... that have you ever heard of staying in your room? <laughs> Stop peeing in a bottle. I did that for a while when I was like, I'm not talking to you, Dad, when I was 15. I was like, Can't leave you still awake. All right, here we go. Let's hope my aim is true and fair. All right. Enough screwing around. The way that you feel about that would be common for a lot of people. And it sort of is, there's, there's a few things that are happening here. First off, your parents could be complete and utter waste of space. That is, just because they gave birth to you doesn't mean they're good people. I know from personal experience. But I know that there's a lot of people that think that they owe something to their parents because of that. But, like, at some point, yeah, I mean, you can still thank them at Christmas or whatever. But I think that parents really are extended into this family thing. Some parents are just bad people. Now, I don't know if they are or aren't. It actually sounds like they just care about you too much. La, 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 la. And they have an attachment complex. And I think that as a result of having an attachment complex, you would have an isolation one that you want to stay away from people. Am I right? That's usually the pattern. But even if that's not, even if the, you still are as needy as your parents are, I think that there is one thing to remember about this, which is... you will probably not be able to change their behavior by convincing them. The first part of that is that behavior runs a lot deeper than logic. How you behave is the result of thousands upon thousands of actions over the course of your life saying to someone, hey, you know that thing that you've been doing since you were six? Can you stop that? It's not going to work. First off, there's going to be a barrier in their brain of something said, not good, what was it? And even if you got past that barrier, even if you got past that, and then you got to the next phase, which is, all right, let's try and change that. A lot of people will try and put that in action. They'll slip over once while they're on the track. And like you, when you started to get into the habit of jogging and then you got bored of it after a week because you don't work in IT and, oh, sorry, aren't running an IT business. No, but people in IT, God, look at them all. Just are they trying out for a new uh, ET movie? They're all got that little pot belly with the long arms. But uh, yes, you will not be able to convince them that way. I think that the best way to get around people that you can't avoid living with, say that they're housemates or that they're your parents, is figure out the things that really trigger you. There was a couple of things that really, really angered me about living with my parents longer than I should have been. Um, and what I started to notice as a result of reading all of these books is the whole point of behavioral psychology, which is that you, all the annoying traits that you do as well, that we all have them. Am I right? Just some of them have much, much worse ones. In fact, one of my parents, I love them to pieces, but they have 
unbelievably annoying habits and you cannot breed them out. Doesn't matter how many times you fight about it, they'll, in fact, they'll entrench it further because the other thing is, once somebody starts attacking you on something, your immediate instinct is to defend it. So they're just going to sit there and say, I don't do that and I know it's because I care about you. They'll have all their reasons. I think that the best thing to do is to make sure that you stay in proximity with them when you can handle it. You observe that there will be points in the relationship where there's a lot of tension that occurs and you can start predicting where they are going to go if you observe that. If you start predict, if you start looking at your relationship as where are the tension points? Those are just your two people's habits coming up against each other and rubbing each other the wrong way. And if you can just see that, oh, okay, we're getting into that territory and you're able to excuse yourself, all well and good. I'll give you a really good example. One of my parents, who shall remain nameless, really liked the guitar and used to sit there watching the TV. Oh, it's giving me flashbacks thinking about it. Uh, sorry, I can't go on. <laughs> sit there and watch the TV and play guitar. And it was really annoying because it was just a blaring television. I don't know why it was so loud. Oh, that's right, because he's old. He's probably deaf. but And also played the guitar over it, but not really doing anything, just fondling around with it for like an hour. And I just started to realise, okay, well, that happens around this time every day when the wine comes out, because once you're 50, wine comes out every night, doesn't it? And then that gets plonked on the coffee table. You hear the first every time. It was always this one. You ready? <laughs> Look, see, I actually am angry thinking about it. It's, it's, I can feel, you know, when you're back, it almost feels like there's wings that are about to come out of it because of this, the, 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 the rage that permeates. It's <laughs> And when that started to happen, I was reading about this. And so I got up, I excused myself and I went for a half an hour walk. And if it was still persisting while that was happening, I took a notebook, I went out and I started doing my work without a laptop, without any distractions, I'd move. And when it was cold, I'd just go to the library. Yeah. But there was a way to excuse myself from a situation. So that tension point of shut the fuck up. You shut up. It's my house. If you don't want to live here, move out. That's not plausible because I don't want to live in a homeless shelter. You're making me homeless. You know, like just horrible on both ends. I don't like it. It doesn't have to be that way. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. So I think that that's what you do is you figure out what it is and then you start to become a sleuthful assassin in the ancient world. You put on your little hoodie cloak and then you know, move through the shadows of life instead of in the daytime. You know what I'm saying here? That in any relationship, there is going to be points and the easiest way to solve those tension points is to not bring them up, is to just make, like, you know, adjust your habits around theirs and you will see that the relationship changes as a result of that. When you start consciously doing this, because here's the whole thing. When people always say, no, you have to address it. Why do you have to address it? Sometimes that might be the solution, but a lot of the times, the way that you are interacting with someone, you just change a couple of things about it. The interaction changes entirely. This is subconsciously happening with every interaction you have in your life. There is a back and forward of your experiences and their experiences and their habits and your habits in meshing. And if you change a couple of those things, you change a couple of those ingredients, hey, presto changer, you've got a completely different recipe. This happens with your parents, this happens with your friends. People that I think that are from broken homes really understand that, that yeah, it's drinking time. They know when it's drinking time, it's fleeing time, yeah? So if you are in one of those situations, I think that the best way out of it in terms of the short term, because eventually you will be moving out, it seems like that that's one of your goals. If you are in that state, I don't think that the best thing to do is to just add more tension to it, right? Change a couple of the habits. Just start behaving in a different way. Say that they're constantly criticizing you about something. 
yeah? Well, there's one thing that you can definitely do. This is something that I think helps a lot is you no know, is constantly reframing it in your mind as this is just their way of saying they love me which it actually is the way that they are constantly criticizing and nagging you is their way of saying that weird right grown ups but <laughs> if you're able to at least do that that's one reframe if the other reframe is that you can at least deflect the conversation onto something else as soon as that happens, just like you can with a little baby the throwing a tantrum. Oh, what's out there? Is that an alien? You can do the same thing with parents. You can do that same thing with everyone else. If you switch it to something that they want to talk about, for instance, if they're interested in cars or property, i.e. every man over the age of 30, ask them about that. That will start changing where the trajectory of the conversation is going. But you figure out where the tension points are and you come up with strategies to start alleviating those tension points. You do that, you will solve yourself a lot of stress and heartache and you will save the opposing party a lot of stress and heartache as well. Because remember, the only thing that you can ever change in life is yourself. Okay, make sure you sign up to Jordan Shanks, the Patreon, where you can get two extra videos a week. If you don't do it, you're only cheating yourself. You really are. There's so much information on there that you can really just start adopting today, just like that, just like that. Very simple, straightforward. There's a lot more of that advice. There's just hundreds and hundreds of books, all condensed. Me saying it. There's apps that are invented of these, of all these nerds that sit around reading all of these books. I'm doing it for a way cheaper price. And you've got your old pal Geordies that you can help out as well instead of just these no-name Americans. I went to Columbia University, did you? I didn't see you go there. How do I know you're not just making it? You just put glasses on. You don't know, do you? With me, you know for a fact I didn't go to Columbia University. Make sure that you sign up for two videos as well. That's where the really good stuff is on this one that's more expensive. And I make sure that I do as well. Don't worry about it. I'm a pretty efficient marketer. Meh. Good enough. Anyway, like and subscribe.